Good morning, DOHTRC family, and welcome sa ito ang uh, LDI lecture for this morning. Um, this is your uh, one of your medical specialists of the center. This is Dr. Jerome Basang, and I'm going to talk about a topic that is very important, no? Nga ito ang mahabawan because it's something, it's a condition, a medical condition that is very common, no? Some of us here may actually have this, no? So, um, I want this lecture to be a very informal one. So, most often, magbisaya ko, and also, magbisagol na English, bisaya, sometimes Tagalog siguro, no? I prepared a very short lecture, and I hope that we get to learn a lot from this, no? I, we will only be touching on the more important ones with regards to the topic dia on diabetes. Now, I entitled the lecture, Understanding Diabetes and Going Back to the Basics, an online lay forum. Now, for the outline, do not tie introduction, do not tie definition, criteria for diagnosis of diabetes. We will talk about the risk factors, on sa mga risgo nga pwede makapotentiate nga ang usaka tao mag-develop ng diabetes. And then, I'll also be talking about the signs and symptoms of um, the patient manifesting uh, with signs and symptoms of diabetes. And then we we'll talk a little on its complications and then as well as the treatment, no? both pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic. Now, um, diabetes is actually a very old condition. No? It has been in existence for centuries. And before, wala man tayo gita mga blood tests to measure the level of sugar no? sa una. So, the ancient healers would oftentimes even taste the urine no? um, in order for them to clench the diagnosis nga, ah, this patient has diabetes. No? So, um, kay matingala man sila nga ang tao, Nga si ihi, grabe kayo niya ga kanang, when they taste the urine, the urine is actually sweet. That is why, uh, eventually, the term diabetes mellitus was coined. And those, this term actually came from um, two words, no? One from, uh, one, one is a Greek word and the other is a Latin word. Diabetes is a Greek word which means to siphon or to flow through, di ba? Kaya ang isa sa mga symptoms kailan nakita is ihi ng ihi, no? Flow through of the fluids. And then, the other term, mellitus, is a Latin term which basically means sweet or honeyed, no? Tamis. That's why when they taste the urine, it's tamis, no? Karun sad, kita ni mo, magsuspet siya ka na diabetic siguro ng isa ka tao kay pagpangihi niya kung ikaw makasunod, gilamigas or gisolom ang niyahang ihi. Okay? So basically, mo na siya ang nahitabo sa una. Now, today, there are, according to the International Diabetes Federation data, there are roughly around 463 million diabetics worldwide. No? And I think more than paana, 365 ang official, ay ang kanang actual, yun nga number. And roughly around 165 million of those diabetics are from the Western Pacific region. Kita, the Philippines, is actually a part of the Western Pacific region. And sa Pilipinas, although we do not really have an exact figure of how many Filipinos who are diabetics, but it is estimated that roughly around 6.3%, more or less, no, 6.3% of the general population among Filipinos are diabetics. So that would translate to about more than 5 million Filipinos. No? So daghan kaayo, no? daghan kaayo uh, diabetics. And it is very important, that is why naataan a lecture, it is very important for you, na dili doctor, to be able to at least know unsa man ang mga importante yung dapat mabawaan. Kay once a patient or once a member of the family gets diabetes, then the chances of the others getting diabetes is also uh, increased. Okay? Now, also... Um, based on the Department of Health data, diabetes is one of the 10 most common causes of morbidity and sometimes mortality um, sa mga Filipinos. No? Patients uh, literally die of complications of diabetes 
and in not the diabetes per se, but rather the complications. Kay morbid kaayo ang complications and sometimes fatal ang complications sa diabetes. Okay? Now, how is or what is the definition of diabetes? No? According to the WHO, diabetes is defined as a, a condition, a chronic metabolic disorder. No? When you say chronic, mean to say long-term or lifelong. Because ang diabetes, dili na pareha sa obosip on, niya kumatambalan, antibiotics, muwa. No, diabetes that is not like that. Diabetes needs a lifelong treatment, lifelong management, no? Busa dunay maintenance medications ang mga diabetics, no? It is a chronic metabolic disease characterized by elevation of blood glucose or hyperglycemia, no? Resulting from either kanang a defect in insulin production or secretion or a defect in insulin use or a combination of both no and there are three major types of diabetes we have type 1 diabetes mellitus type 2 and gestational diabetes type 1 diabetes is most commonly diagnosed sa childhood no kay kanisha ang usa ka klase nga diabetes nga ang bata when diagnosed, already has, ang iyang pancreas is actually incapable of producing insulin. So, kuwang yung kayang insulin. That is why these types of individuals nga dunay type 1 diabetes, manginahanglan gayod o lifelong injection or lifelong diabetes nga itupok sa ilaha no, on a daily basis. Karo na naman ay mga kanang um kana ganing uh, device nga i-implant no para mag-provide og insulin sa ano sa sa pasyente which is very useful among type 1 diabetes but uh, just the same ang type 1 diabetics would need lifelong insulin therapy no so in the philippines it's not very common um pero mas taas-taas ang incidence of type 1 diabetes among Caucasian counterparts, no? Particularly those in the kanang Scandinavian countries, ang I think ang pinakatagas og incidences ang Finland and Sweden, no? And they have proposed a lot of kanang mechanisms nga no. But the more common one or the most common type of diabetes is type 2 diabetes, no? This is the type of diabetes nga makita nato usually diagnosed in adulthood, no? Although karon lately because of siguro the advent of childhood obesity nagkabata na ang mga type 2 diabetics na ana tay makita nga diabetic type 2 diabetics nga batan on no like teenager matingala ka nga no man nag diabetes nga bata pa man and then you get to test to uh, to request for a test nga mo confirm kung unsa ba gyud siya type 1 ni siya or type 2 diabetes no mag request ka uh, C peptide for example and then pag test ni mo pag check ni mo dito makita nga ah type 2 diabetic din ni siya so uh, this ta this is the most common type of diabetes that's why mo ni siya ato ang pagahisgutan because um very strong sad ang correlation ani sa family history okay and then the third uh, type is also uh, is gestational diabetes. And gestational diabetes naman is the kind of uh, diabetes that happens during pregnancy. No? Um, pregnancy in itself is a diabetogenic state, meaning it can, uh, once a, a woman, even if wala siya kaliwat nga diabetes, um, can have um, kind of ganing um, diabetes during pregnancy. But then, ang, ang gestational diabetes, koan, kana ganing, mawala na siya, move revert back to normal once the, termin, the pregnancy is terminated or once maanak na ang kana ganing pasyente. However, for patients nga dunay history of gestational diabetes, dapat magbantay sa because um, gestational diabetes is also a risk factor para mag-develop 
og type 2 diabetes. Okay? So, muna siya ang mga basic um, categories or basic types of diabetes. Now, how do we as physicians confirm our suspicion nga, ay, kaninga pasyente ba, sindu na ni siya diabetes? Because some pa uh, patients come in with a lot of symptoms, no? On sa una mo pag-confirm, then we get to, sa una, di, karun, dili na yung matilawgi. <laughs> ha? Um, we now test for the blood sugar level of our patients to check the, for the presence of hyperglycemia. No? Diba, itong definition ka ganina sa diabetes, it is a metabolic disorder characterized by hyperglycemia. Meaning to say, taas ang sugar level. Now, there are three basic tests na pwede maka-confirm o diabetes, no? aside from checking on the signs and symptoms. One is the use of a fasting blood sugar level or fasting plasma glucose. Now, the normal fasting plasma glucose, oh, by the way, how is it prepared? No, syempre mag-fasting no? or maglaming ang usa kapasyente. Typically, around 8 hours, at least 8 hours of no caloric intake, meaning walay uh, kaonon or imnon that contains calories because that can affect the uh, result. Although, ang fasting blood sugar is uh, test is actually an index of hepatic glucose output. No? Kuan na siya ang gana, basically ginatanaw din ha is how uh, unsay output sa imuhang atay in terms of uh, glucose production. Now, the normal fasting blood glucose is between 70 to 99 milligrams per deciliter. No? Sa test. So, kita, di ba, bago raman ta nahuman sa ito ang um, uh, kanaganing, bago raman ta nahuman sa uh, annual PE. No? Um, you check, when you do your annual physical examination, check ni mo, check to ni mo yung muhang FBS result. And, uh, makita ni mo dito whether it is well within, it falls within the normal range or not, no? So, uh, ang normal, again, basically is 70 to 99. Pag mupatong sa 100 to 125 milligrams per deciliter, that is called an impaired glucose tolerance. Ay, sorry, impaired fasting glucose. Meaning, it is no longer um, normal, but it is low uh, it is ubus siya for it to be considered uh, ganing cut off for diabetes because the cut off for diabetes type 2 is a fasting blood glucose of 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher. And that should be uh, confirmed with another test, no? At least twice on separate occasions nga taken that the fasting blood glucose is consistently 126 or above. Okay? So, that's fasting. The other test, which is actually one of my favorite tests, a request for me, if I, conf if I would like to confirm um, the uh, diabetes in, a pa in my patient, is to request for a 75 grams OGTT, no? or 75 grams oral glucose tolerance test. Na unsa man ni siya, kani siya usa ka test nga uh, di lang kas akwaan og dugo ang pasyente, no? At least 3 times kwaan siya dugo. Wa, the first step is to get a fasting baseline and then after which nai painom sa pasyente nga usa ka mura og juice, no, that contains 75 grams of glucose. So medyo tam is good siya, no? And then once mainom na niya, one hour after kuan siya dugo, and then two hours after kuan siya dugo. The two hours after uh, is actually the most important because a patient with um, kana ganing a two hours nga result, no, uh, two hours after uh, taking that challenge, the glucose challenge, a result of two hundred milligrams per deciliter or higher actually confirms the presence of uh, diabetes. In that patient. Now, a random test, uh, on sa random test, a random blood sugar test is, kuwan na rin mo siya dugo, karun da yun, no? Whether, wala siya nag-fasting, wala any preparation. A random test um, of 200 milligrams per deciliter or higher plus the presence of signs and symptoms, the classic signs and symptoms of diabetes will also confirm 
the presence of diabetes. Okay? And then the other uh, test, which in our country, it's, uh, in our country is mainly used for monitoring purposes and not mainly, not basically on um, diagnostic test, is what we call the HbA1c or glycosylated hemoglobin. Ang kanisya nga test would give us an overview of what the blood sugar level is for the past three months. No? In the Philippines, like I said, it's not recommended for diagnostic use. No? Meaning, dili na nato ginagamit to confirm diabetes. But rather, ang iyahang main use is for monitoring purposes. Dinhi na to makita, tanawon, whether na achieve na to ang target na to ang blood sugar level sa pasyente or wala during treatment. It is also one way for us to check whether the medications are working or not, no? Ang HbA1c. But in other countries, ginagamit nila to as kanang diagnostic because most of their laboratories are NGSP certified. In the Philippines kasi, dili tanan. No? That's why it's very difficult to use it as a diagnostic tool in the Philippines. Okay? So, sa test na tay fasting blood sugar, 75 grams OGTT, um, and of course, HbA1c, and katong random test plus the signs and symptoms. Okay? So, what are the risk factors of uh, diabetes mellitus or DM type 2? Daghan risk factors for the development of DM2, DM type 2. Ang pinaka common is family history, no or genetic predisposition. Kung duna is kaliwat, duna kay isa ka family member, for example a parent, no, na duna diabetes, chances are one of the kids would or one of the offspr offsprings will eventually develop diabetes, no. Duna chances nga magdevelop og di og diabetes no na mga studies nga sa uh, if uh, if a twin has type 2 diabetes then the other twin has a 75% chance of getting type 2 dm also no so in ana gid ka strongly correlated ang family history of diabetes in the family um, for the others to develop the condition as well the next is obesity no obesity kasi no because of the fat deposits in the body particularly ang kanang visceral fat or ang fat sa sulod sa tiyan which is the more dangerous fat um, it is actually a state of kanang gitawag na mo og peripheral insulin resistance no meaning there is insulin but then the insulin is not properly used no because of the presence of uh, kanang fats in the um, muscle cells. So, kanang obesity is also a risk factor no? um, of developing diabetes. And one of the reasons nga nung mahimong obese ang usaka individual is because of physical inactivity. No? Uh, which is also another risk factor. Physical inactivity or kanang mga couch potato, they are also at a higher risk to developing diabetes because ang movement kasi, no, or especially exercise, improves insulin sensitivity. No? So, makatabang siya nga ang insulin nga ginaproduce sa pancreas will be used by the muscle cells or the cells of the body if the patient is actually doing some activity no? or exercising. Now, the the other the third um kanaganing factor or fourth factor risk factor is race no now kanisha we don't uh, just like genetic predisposition we actually do not have the choice no like for example kita um according to several epidemiologic studies uh unfortunately asians no especially south asians or southeast asians um latinos um, African Americans and the Native Americans, the Pima Indians in the in in, Amer in the Americas, have a higher risk of developing 
type 2 diabetes compared to the Caucasians. Okay? So, muna siya ang ato ang quote and quote racial disadvantage kung baga, no? Um, except for type 1, kato sa type 1 sad ang mas taas ang Caucasians, but particularly those living in the more colder climates, no? Katong sa Sweden and sa Finland. Sila ang mas higher ang incidence of type 1. But in terms of type 2 uh, diabetes, us Asians, no? The fact that we are Asians, we are already having this risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Okay? Now, history of gestational diabetes is also a risk factor. So, ako na na-mention kagalina kung Kung ikaw babae, dayon pagkahuma, nagbuntis ka, nagkaroon ka ng gestational diabetes, your, um, and then of course, mawala man na siya, no, kay pagpanganak ni mo, but you are still at a risk of developing diabetes if you do not take care of your health. And then age, no, I think it's understandable because um, as we grow older, no, the theory of wear and, th wear and tear, no, nga, Pag, magka, mag, pag magkatigulang ta, ang atuas ang abilities ato ang pancreas, but particularly the beta cells of the pancreas. As we grow older, its capability to produce more insulin is also kanang impaired. No? So, kana, that's understandable. The other is PCOS, history of PCOS. Sa kanin PCOS, ang mga lang po ni siya. PCOS or PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome Ang polycystic ovarian syndrome kasi, um, it's uh, also characterized by insulin resistance. No, Most of those na ipikos gani are actually big no, or uh, obese individuals, although not all. But um, studies also show a correlation between the history of PCOS to uh, the development of type 2 DM. And then... Um, other risk factors would be increase in blood pressure, uncontrolled blood pressure, elevated triglyceride, no? A triglyceride, naglipid profile man during annual physical examination, no? The lipid profile na elevated is also um, a risk factor for uh, the development of uh, diabetes. And then, um, history of prediabetes. Like I remember mo, nag ko kaganina nga. Um, if the fasting blood sugar is above normal, pero less than the cutoff for diabetes, like 100 mg per deciliter, deciliter, up to 125 mg per deciliter ang fasting blood sugar, that is borderline, di ba? Above normal, pero less than the cutoff for diabetes. Now, that is called, that is one of the categories for pre-diabetes, ang impaired fasting glucose. Doon na po isa, impaired glucose tolerance. Now, if that, if that patient has a history of uh, prediabetes, then that can also eventually lead to uh, dia full-blown diabetes um, if nothing is done. Okay? So, basically, mo, uh, mo to siya ang ato ang mga risk go no, or the risk factors that we get to see in patients o uh, who develop, who will eventually develop diabetes. So what are the classic, or what are the signs and symptoms of um, diabetes? We have the classic three Ps. No, tawag naman ay three Ps. Kung ang government or ang DSW do nay four Ps, ang diabetes do nay three Ps. No? Um, what are the three Ps of um, diabetes, signs and symptoms? Polyuria, polyphagia, and polydipsia. Now, what is polyuria? Diba, na-mention ako kanina katong sa, sa unang panahon, itest nilang ihi. Ang polyuria, makadaghan mang ihi, no? Wala pa ganit, sa kaoras, gikan nang ihi, kay hiun na pod. And these are voluminous na ihi, no? So, kana siya. Polyuria, polydipsia. So, sige man ihi, no? Uh, Gaka-dehydrate, oh, how per me, no? Muna ga, sige sila inom ang tubig. So, syempre, sige inom ang tubig, sige po nagihi. And then polydipsia, uh, polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia. There's an extreme hunger. No? Matingala ka kay, bago pa nagkawang, gutom na po. No? Sige lang ka gutman. Or dali ra kayo magutman rather. So, and yet, dali ra kayo siya magutman, but then, gakaniwang. No? Because, 
uh, sudden unexplained weight loss is also a risk, uh, is also one of the kanang sign as uh, symptom of kana ganing diabetes no hingkalit lang ka ni Wang nga wala man ta nag diet no kay sige kaon and then fatigue no murag kapoy permi um, irritability there is also some patients will also present with blurring of vision no sometimes ang blurring of vision kay kanang mawawa because na blur ang vision tungod kay the kana bitong the lens is also dehydrated no kay sige man ihi no but sometimes nag blur ang vision kay wa sila ka balo nga dugay na sa diabetes na na dai sila kanang problema gyud mismo sa mata and then slow healing wound no or non healing wound isa also na siya sa mga signs and symptoms the presence of ketones in the urine no um sa pag kung mag test sa urinalysis and then frequent and recurrent infections like infection sa gums mag gingivitis or ga uh, vaginal candidiasis no nag fungal infection sa puerta and those with um recurrent matingala kay sige lang man siya kasamad kana murag mag balik-balik ang skin lesions or skin problems no do na infection sa panit and then lo and behold pag check nimo sa sugar ay taas man di ay no diabetic man di ay those are the typical signs and symptoms of patients suffering from diabetes now after we get to see the signs and symptoms we now talk about complications. Kung ang usa ka diabetic dili magtarong sa pagpanambal, no, magpasagad sa iyahang diabetes, it, if it is if it is left untreated, patients will develop complications. And mind you, complications sa diabetes um, is not easy. No, it's very difficult, it's very sad. And it is lifelong. Ang diabetes complication is also chronic. No, patients will really suffer. I've seen a lot of patients nga uh, banjing banjing lang sa una kaya wala pa y kana digit mo pato o kaya wala pa may gibati nga complications. And once na may complications, luoy na kaayo. No, and <coughs> excuse me. Once a patient with diabetes. Uh, or a diabetic patient we already develops complication sometimes it's going to be late already because the complications may not be reversed pwede siya dili mo balik sa normal no the most common complications are chronic and long term as, as well no diabetes kasi since tibuok lawas no it's pervasive tibuok lawas ang maaffected no and ang complications sa diabetes gina simplify into mac macrovascular and the uh, microvascular complications so as i said the major complications of diabetes simplified um, into microvascular and macrovascular no sa microvascular complications of diabetes katong mga gagmatin kay na mga vessels ang affected they can present in terms of complications with problems sa mata <clears throat> patients with uncontrolled diabetes will eventually develop kanang diabetic retinopathy no so ang ilahang blood vessel sa mata madaot no and it it can blind the patient no and sa mata not only diabetic retinopathy pwede sa diabetic cataract no but ang ang pinaka kanabitong murag e, chronic is actually the um, diabetic retinopathy so mabuta but that can be uh, that can be treated with mga laser treatment pero eventually mo worsen gyud gyapon now, once a patient has kanang complications sa mata at gitawag na tog diabetic retinopathy, chances are that patient may already have diabetic nephropathy. Affected na sa kasagara ana ang uh, <clears throat> kidneys. Okay? So once the kidneys are affected, uh, it's going to be progressive kasagara and eventually that patient may need 
um, renal replacement therapy. Unsa man ang renal replacement therapy? Dialysis, no? So, in ana kaluoy kung dunay mga complications sa diabetes, no? Um, <clears throat> another microvascular complication sa diabetes is nephropathy, ay neuropathy rather, or sa ugat, sa nerve. Once that sets in, naana na siya ka ng paminhod, no? Kasagara na kay stocking and glove nga pattern sa pagpaminhod, sa kamot o sa tiil. And eventually, sa iyang kabinhod, wala na siya mabatian ang pasyente. No, di na siya kabati o sakit. So, what happens is that, um, di sila kabantay nga natunok na di sila. No? Kay baga naman kailang lapalapa. Pag tamak nila, natunok na di sila. They will, the only thing that they will learn nga natunok na sila is, manimaho na, kinalata na ang tiil. No? It has already become gangrenous. So, when that happens, the risk of amputation is also kanang taas no you amputate or run the risk of having sepsis kanang mukalat ang infection sa tibok lawas no now the other complications also would be stroke is another complication of diabetes heart attack and heart failure is also a complication of diabetes and then um some also may develop kanang uh, peripheral vascular diseases. No? And sa lalaki also, one of the most dreaded complication of diabetes among men is erectile dysfunction. No? So, these complications, daghan pa kayong laing complications. There are also uh, acute complications no, kanang mga diabetic emergency sama sa di- uh, diabetic ketoacidosis and HHS. But, ang kaning mga major chronic complications, these complications mang good, kanabit ang inanay, insidious in onset. Dili siya pinakalit. No? But once that happens, then we, you know that the diabetes has been neglected for some time. <clears throat> and once that happens, dili lang physical ang pwede nga kanang ma affected sa usa ka pasyente but patients who have chronic diabetes complications may even suffer from depression no kinsa ba sa gyud dili magdepress kung nag kuan na ka nag nag renal failure na ka nag end stage kidney disease na ka tungod sa uh, uncontrolled diabetes so in ana ka subo in ana ka sad uh, o kangilngig ang complications sa diabetes. That is why it is very important for us, no, physicians, no, especially sa ato mga kaokolig na namin ako to emphasize good na to ang need for kanaganing control of blood sugar for the treatment of uh, diabetes. And treatment of diabetes should be kanang uh, patient-focused and family-centered. Sometimes, naiuban mga colleagues na to, no, nga malimtan o sahay ang pamilya. It is always important nga um, management of diabetes is patient-focused and family, uh, patient-focused and family-centered. Because, dili lang ang once ang dunay pasyente nga diabetic dapat everyone in the family should be concerned because sooner or later that family member may develop diabetes kung dili siya magcareful and at the same time the lifestyle modification is very important and if you can uh, if you do not kind uh, involve the family chances are the patients with diabetes may feel isolated nga sila lang gilain ang ilang pagkaon etc no and it is very important that all physicians no regardless ko unsa imong specialty whether you're a general practitioner a family physician a general internist even a surgeon no dapat all physicians should be able to at least kana bitaw have a grasp on how to manage diabetes no particularly 
how to screen patients no of potential diabetic patients so now we go sa ato ang treatment now unsa on pag manage namong mga doctor ang diabetes of course dunay mga pharmacologic uh, management no maghisgot sa mga tambal but we will not talk about pharmacologic treatment um in detail because this is a lay forum no but uh, it, it is enough for me to say nga sa treatment sa diabetes dunay mga tabletas ug duna sa injectables no <clears throat> the injectables are in a form of either insulin or katong GLP-1 which is the more expensive one so um kada sila gi ang paghatag dili basta-basta maghatag ang doktor og tambal sa pasyente nga diabetes gina gina um gina screen na siya no we as physicians we try to tailor no am gina tailor ang paghatag sa tambal sa pasyente nga dunay diabetes based on the patient's need based on the patient's acceptability sa form of medication no and the potential kanang uh, side effects at the same time of course amo ang ginatanaw ang cost no especially sa ato sa Pilipinas nga out of pocket ang paghatag sa tambal or ang pagpalit sa tambal then we also we really consider the cost also now um, the more important part of the management is actually ang non-pharmacologic treatment sa diabetes. So, um, I think dili dapat ta masumhan nga mag-emphasize nga lifestyle modification is very important for patients to... Uh, the lifestyle modification is very important for diabetic patients as well as those family members nga dunay kanang family member nga dunay diabetes, no? So, um, kana ganing the lifestyle modification should be um, tibuok family, not only sa katong diabetic already, no? Because sa ginay emphasize na nato, dunay kalabigitan ang family history. So, lifestyle modification in terms of food intake, um, there are patients nga um, kana bitang dili kay nila masabdan ang kanang mga calorie counting in ana no kay medyo lisod man sa jud siya and dili ganina ako personally I'm not a master in terms of kana ganing um, calorie counting so kung naay pasyente nga kinahanglan nagi special needs ana especially katong naay dunay mga complications I refer to a nutritionist dietitian so ang pagtreat nato ani sa kanang diabetes dili lang ni siya nga ikaw rajud there is no such thing as uh, kanabitaong a solo na treatment sa isa ang doktor ra gyud ang nakabalo because it has to be a team effort magrefer me sa kanang um, nutritionist dietitian para magiyahan ang usa ka diabetic patient on the proper kana ganing uh, preparation sa pagkaon no particularly kung ga calorie count ang ang pasyente but um, to give you an idea, a very simple uh, method would be the pinggang pinoy or the plate method, no? Um, if sa imuhang plate, ang pinaka dako nga part should be the kanaganing um, the vegetable part, no? The leafy vegetables, and then there's also a portion for the meat and then a portion for the carbohydrate. And um, ang pinggang pinoy method. Uh, well, you can actually search it sa kanagaling sa internet, no? Um, it's actually very useful. It's very useful um, for as a simplified tool or a simplified kanang visualization kung unsa ang uh, manner sa kanagaling preparation sa pagkaon. And then another would be uh, physical activity. Diba ang risk isa sa risk factor kay physical inactivity. Physical activity helps in terms of blood sugar control. Kay sa ginaingon ko na it actually improves insulin sensitivity in the skeletal muscles. So magamit gyud ang insulin nga ginaproduce sa lawas in terms of magamit siya sa uh, muscle cells, no, in terms of energy production. 
Now, sa regular physical activity, in order, as, as a good, kuan nga ng, um, as a good, um, what do you call this one? As a good exercise, no? Would be aerobic exercise at least 30 minutes a day, most days of the week. That's like five times a week, no? And then, weight loss, no? Kung obese ang usang ata or overweight, weight loss is very important. But I think in terms of weight loss, it has to be gradual and not very ab- abrupt. I think it is important.